I have a Minolta Auto Rocker PF 55mm f2 lens here that I'm going to be disassembling. This lens is fairly easy to take apart and repair. It's actually quite similar to some of the other rocker lenses, the later, later um, non-auto versions, so the MC1 and MC2. Here I have the um, 55mm just MC uh, rocker PF. So a 17 lens and these two lenses externally are quite similar um, and internally they're very similar as well uh, in how they're constructed. There are a few subtle differences like on the auto rocker here there's this little lever over here and this one doesn't have that uh, and this is a 17 and this is the f2 but they're quite similar internally in how they're constructed um, just with a few different little variations. So what I'm going to be doing is taking this lens fully apart get access to the diaphragm to the uh, mechanical sections and the optics and body sections all on their own so that they can all be cleaned and repaired properly. I'm going to start on the front of the lens and go in and get access to the diaphragm so if there's any oil on that it could be cleaned. Um, I'll go in from the front to get access to the front of the diaphragm first. To start off I'm going to remove the name ring here. It has two little uh, divots for a spanning wrench here and here. Next, I'll undo the filter ring holder here, this body piece. Um, and this lens also does, it's like the MC rocker, this one, the MC1 um, rocker, that it uses uh, slotted screws entirely. Uh, so I'm gonna undo this filter ring holder, it just is held in place by these three screws going around here. And now I'll undo the front optical piece. I have the front optical section here, and then the focusing mechanism and the focusing ring down here. So I'm going to undo the front optical piece by on the outer section of the um, rings here. There's two divots for a spanning wrench. I want to undo the outermost ones to undo the entire piece. Now I have access to the front of the diaphragm, so I can clean off the aperture blades here. And uh, next I'll just remove the entire diaphragm mechanism so that it can be cleaned on its own. This it just is held in place by these four screws going around on the ring here. Now I can just slide the entire diaphragm mechanism out here and this piece is almost identical uh, to the one used in the later MC rocker. To get access to the back of the diaphragm uh, so that this piece can be cleaned a little better I also have to remove the back optical piece um, so it's just held in place here. Uh, there are two little divots for a spanning wrench on either side. All right, so remove that. And now I have the diaphragm on its own. Uh, this piece has both the diaphragm itself and then the aperture control curve, which is over here. Uh, and what this little post back here is actually controlling the diaphragm directly, while this one over here, this kind of forked section, is controlling the aperture control curve. Uh, and this little, so it's moving the uh, brass colored section here back and forth which moves this post up and down along this aperture control curve. So this one is actually getting coupled to the stop down lever, while this one's getting coupled to the aperture control ring. Going back to the main lens body, I'll flip over the lens here and start removing some of these back body sections. I'll start off by removing the entire mounting plate. Um, and so this will allow me to get access to the uh, mechanical parts of this lens uh, so that those could be repaired if there are any problems with that. It's just the mounting plate itself is held in place by the four screws on the black ring going around here um, and this will lift off everything uh, below the section down here, so um, below the ring with the depth of field scale. Alright, so I can just lift that off. And just looking a little bit more at this mounting plate piece. Uh, in the back section here, 
I'll remove a few more of these body sections uh, that we have on the inside we have all the mechanical components so this is actually what's coupling the stop down lever uh, and everything and this little lever over here to the diaphragm mechanism so the mechanical components in here if there's something wrong with them there could be friction or something you can try to repair them at this stage I'll also remove on the back section here I'll remove this silver ring which is, I believe, a cosmetic piece uh, as part of the mounting plate. It's just is held in place by the three screws going around here. And I'll also remove this black ring here, which is what the stop-down lever is actually going through and kind of uh, keeps things out of the inside of the lens. So it's held in place by the three black screws here. This will just... Um, <clears throat> This will make the reassembly a little bit easier because it allows you to see a little bit better how everything's fitting together. All right, so that just lifts out. So that piece is pretty much as far disassembled as I took it. Um, and just to finish up with the disassembly and remove these last body sections, I want to remove this ring here, the aperture control ring, the one with the um, depth of field scale and the focusing ring so that those could actually be cleaned. I'll start with the aperture control ring which is just sitting down here on the main lens body. There's nothing holding it in place at this stage um, but there is a little ball bearing right here on this side that makes the clicking sound as you move back and forth. So I have to be careful not to lose that while removing this. So get that piece and the little ball bearing is right here. Next up on this main lens body, we have the ring with the depth of field scale, um, which is actually coupling in to, it's coupling the uh, main lens body into the focusing mechanism. So you can see that it, this piece has this little bar down here that's going into the focusing mechanism and it's coupling the intersection in so that the intersection actually extends up and down instead of just rotating around freely. So I'm going to remove this ring uh, and it's held in place by the four screws going around here. So I can lift this out. And this piece can be cleaned on its own now since there aren't any mechanical parts or anything that can really be damaged. And finally, to complete the disassembly and just remove this last body section, uh, which is the focusing ring on the outside of the lens, you can see it's pretty grimy on this particular copy. Um, I'm going to undo the ring here. I'm flipping back over to the front of the lens and separate it from the focusing mechanism on the inside. Um, and once you do this, you have to zero the lens back to infinity. Uh, but in this case, that's what I want to do since I need to be able to clean this. Um, so it's held in place by the three screws going around here on the inside. And these screws do have little washers as well. And before removing this, I'm just going to take note of where this little slot right here is kind of in relation. I had focused the lens as far into infinity as possible before, and I'll kind of note that the um, two uh, unit markings are a little bit clockwise of this little thing where the, um, where the uh, ring here was actually coupling to the inside of the focusing mechanism. That'll be important for the reassembly. So now I can just lift off the focusing ring here. So now I have the disassembly complete. I have the different body sections like the focusing ring, the aperture control ring, and the one with the depth of field scale, and a few other the body sections separate. I have the mechanical pieces, so the one here that's actually coupling the stop down lever into the diaphragm, and the diaphragm itself and the focusing mechanism separate so those can all be cleaned and repaired as needed and I have the optics on their own. The two optical pieces, let me zoom back in here, can be further disassembled by uh, uh, this, by removing the 
rings here. You can see that there are two sets of divots here for spanning wrenches. Um, and I only undid the outer ones just to remove the entire piece, but if you undo the inner ones here, you can remove some of the individual elements and clean inside these. The reason you'd want to do that if it is if there is fungus actually inside the optics and not just on one of the exterior surfaces, either on the, on the front here or the back of these elements. So now I'm going to start the reassembly of this lens. Uh, and the reassembly is pretty straightforward on this. Uh, it's very similar to the MC Rocker F1.7 in the reassembly as well, so it's a fairly easy lens to put back together. I'll start with the focusing mechanism here and the ring with the depth of field scale and reattach these two. So I'm going to line this up um, so that the bar on the ring here goes into the groove on the focusing mechanism. And then after that, the screw holes should line up on the back as well. Like that. And I'll reattach these two pieces. Alright, so next I'll reattach the aperture control ring. And this is just going to slide in place uh, so that the little post over here that's actually doing the coupling um, for the aperture control ring is going into the larger gap over here so it can slide back and forth. And then the also that the ball bearing let me find where it's positioned here. So that the ball bearing right here is in place and lined up with the groove. So I'll get the ball bearing in, for, in place first. And then I should be able to slide this ring on top of the ball bearing and have it click back and forth. Next on the back, I'll line up the mounting plate piece here um, and reattach this. And this piece needs to get lined up so that the stop down lever over on this side has a little a pocket here that is actually going to hook into the diaphragm. That needs to go over here in this other gap, the smaller gap. So this should line up like, um, like that and then the screws on the back should line up as well. So there are four screws going around on the intersection here that I'll reattach. And the reason I've been assembling the back section first is so that all the mechanical parts down here will be in place um, to line up the diaphragm later. Now I'm going to reattach the focusing ring on the front section here. Let me put on a lens cap. Um, on the front section here, just in any position, um, it's closer to infinity in its current state. So I'm going to just attach it kind of near infinity uh, and then go back and zero the lens later. So this is going to be reattached with the three screws going around here on the intersection. And now I want to get the diaphragm itself back in place as well. Um, so looking through on the lens here, in the mechanical parts down here, uh, there are two components with the stop down lever which is controlling the diaphragm directly um, with the little uh, cup over here that's getting hooked in and actually moving the lever on the diaphragm mechanism back and forth. And then there's the aperture control ring which is moving that curve on the diaphragm uh, back and forth. So it's moving the forked piece over here, which adjusts the curve here. Um, and that's being controlled by this little post right here. So as I move the aperture control ring back and forth, that little post moves back and forth. Um, so for this stage, I have to line up the two sets of things here. I have to get the fork on top of this little post over here for the aperture control ring, and I have to get the uh, post for the stop down lever through this little uh, pocket over here so that it, that's linked up as well. So I can kind of judge that this is kind of in the right spot and then looking in from the back I can get the um, aperture control ring lined up first and a little bit over. Move the stop down lever over a bit until those are lined up 
and then the four screws on the front should go lined up as well here, 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 and here. What I should see is that when I move the aperture control ring back and forth, the aperture opens and closes, and then the stop down lever fully opens the lens as well. That's how you know that everything is hooked up correctly back there. Uh, next, I'm going to reattach the front optical piece. So I'm, this is, just screws into place. And I'll lock it down using the spanning wrench. And now I'm going to focus this in so it's not sitting on the glass on the front. And on the back of the lens, just finish up the reassembly here. So I'm gonna reattach the back optical piece as well. And also lock this one down with the spanning wrench. And I'll also reattach this silver ring here. Um, it has a little slot that goes over the lever on this side. Um, and then the three screw holes should line up on the back going around here. Finally, on the back section, I'll reattach this black plastic piece right in here. Actually, it's metal on this lens, but um, it just goes, lines up so that the um, stop down lever goes through the gap and then the three screws line up like that. All right, so now I have the back reassembly complete. And also on the front, what I have is the entire lens assembled except for the filter ring holder here, this black piece, and then the name ring. Um, and I still have access, if I focus in, to the um, focusing ring down here. So to focus it back to infinity, I'd mount the lens on the camera in its current state, find where it's focused to infinity um, without paying attention to the scales here, uh, and then loosen up the uh, focusing ring here so that I can move it around freely independently of actual focusing optically. And then once I have it at infinity optically, I would tighten this back down at infinity. Um, so that's how you would focus the lens back to infinity. Uh, but for now, I'll continue on with the reassembly and put in the black filter ring holder first. Just has the three screws lining up in any orientation here. Finally, I'll reattach the name ring, just screws in place into the filter ring that I just reattached. And I can lock this down as well with the spanning wrench. So that should have the lens completely reassembled. You can check, make sure that everything is uh, working properly, that it focuses to the minimum focusing distance and the maximum focusing distance and is optically focusing at infinity when it's set to infinity as well. That the stop down lever opens and closes the aperture fully and that the aperture control ring, um, which is a little hard to move on this lens, um, is also moving back and forth properly. So this lens is a, a very repairable lens. It's easy to take apart and get access to all the different parts that you may need to repair or clean, such as the diaphragm, mechanical components, and then also remove the individual body sections. It uses all metal parts. Uh, the only annoying, no, the only annoyance really being the that it uses slotted screws. And this lens is so similar in how it's uh, designed internally to the MC rockers, the MC1 version and the MC2 of this uh, 55 millimeter lenses, that if you've taken this type of lens apart before, you pretty much know what to expect with the auto rocker as well.